So I was in the shower, I was cleaning my ass and making all shirts all sparkly, spanking clean. I'm not the funny one, I'm the pretty one. Cock shots. <laughs> <laughs> I just checked myself out. Beatles, music, wine, and then loop up and get on top. The glory hole's like a, a like dick theater. I've imagined your pants. Which means your pants had better come off. Mama needs playtime. I do this one. We're not sluts. We just love love. Hello, Podcast Land. We're going back to Disneyland again. Oh, I love like- this is Podcast Land. Oh, I want to go to <laughs> Disneyland. Sorry, Podcast Land. Yeah, but I really want to go to Disneyland. <laughs> This is Angela. Hi, this is Bradford. And you're here with us for another week at yes. By the By. Thanks Hi. for joining in. Yeah. Um, I'm not drinking alcohol. No, we had a big weekend. It is it is late on a Monday night mm-hmm. and I'm drinking coffee. <laughs> Leaded, not unleaded. Right. Yes. I'm also going to be eating, for those of you who might live in Perth who don't like it. I don't care. These are the closest Australia has to Thin Mints. It's true. And if you live in the States, you know Girl Scout cookies, and you know that they lace them with drugs and mm-hmm. get you craving them nightly. Well, the closest they have to Thin Mints in Australia are Thin Mint Slices. Uh, no, they're just mint slices. Are they? Oh, you're right. They're mint sli- slices. Uh, and they're really good, and we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Yes. I need them. I need my precious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, this is comfort food. Mm-hmm. I need comforting. <laughs> So yeah, it was a big weekend. Yes. We had a lot going on. We had a took it easy on Friday night because we knew the weekend was going to be big. And Saturday there were a few things during the day. Yeah. Do we need to pause while you crunch? No. 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 And uh, yeah, so Saturday evening we had a party that we went to, and we took the boyfriend to it. Like your. Boyfriend, not yeah. our boyfriend. We need to come up with a good name for him. Yeah. Other than your boyfriend, not our boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> not the gentleman. Yeah. We'll have the gentleman and not, not the gentleman. gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, he went with us. And admittedly, we left that party probably midnight-ish and yeah. went to the Imperial and danced the night away there. Yeah. So that was fun. It was a good evening. And, yeah, it uh, was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. We got really drunk. Yeah. Between three of us, we had three bottles of wine and three bourbon and Cokes. And but that was like from dinner onwards. Out, and we stayed out till 3 a.m. Yeah, that was from dinner till 3 a.m. Yeah. Yeah, and then Sunday uh, was, I don't know when it officially started, but it was our start of the Sydney Fringe Festival. So we went to a couple of different Fringe well, shows. It wasn't mine. I'd started on Thursday. Fine. It was my <laughs> start to the Sydney Fringe Festival. <laughs> uh, we went to a couple of Fringe things. Yes, if you don't know yeah. what Fringe is... Uh, or if you live in Sydney and haven't done Fringe. Uh, so Fringe is a lot of little theater pop-ups, and they do these great little shows. Uh, and it wasn't the start, because you were there on opening night of Fringe with Hilda. Okay, Miller. fair enough. So, Sorry. See, this was my third Fringe show okay. this year. Uh, so it, it goes through the month of September, and it's great little um, independent theaters and and. Uh, Just different kinds of performances. Yeah, you never know what you're going to see. It's really great stuff. So if you're in Sydney or in the Sydney, New South Wales area, definitely check out uh, Sydney Fringe. It's some great theater stuff. You know, who knows? We might have a show next year. Uh, Who knows? There might have been talk of us doing a show next year. So, yeah, good stuff. Yeah, we it was a good weekend, and mm-hmm. we had a friend who had a movie he directed, and, yeah. and it was his world premiere of his movie, which, you know, you know that's always awkward. It's like, because people were like, oh, come see my movie. And you're like, oh, cool, you made a movie. And I'm like, I know you have a degree in movie. I don't know what that means, like what what his actual degree is. But I'm, pretty sure, it's is not, in, I'm pretty sure it's not degree of movie. It should, like, knowing him, it might be. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> Like, I expect his, I, I sort of expect his diploma to say, doctor of movie. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you never know what you're getting yourself into. Yeah. And then you always know that afterwards, and this is a person as a friend, and you don't want to be like, hmm, you're me sucked. 
<laughs> Although this person, I would tell them that. I would, actually. I'd be absolutely <laughs> honest with him, and he would take it. And it was, but look, it was a great movie. It was actually really good, yeah. Fucking it amazing. didn't suck. <laughs> it did not suck. Yeah. It was really cleverly done, and the storytelling is brilliant. Yeah. So, yeah. And then we went to see uh, a Amy Wee doing her Rule 34 live nude clowns show. Yeah. Uh, which was basically her up for an hour with uh, occasionally a ukulele talking about her five years of editing porn. Mm-hmm. And it was pretty funny. It was fucking <laughs> yeah. hilarious. Yeah, she's a funny lady. I oh like, my God, I like listening so to her. She tells great stories. Yeah. And she tells them in a way that's just exactly what you want. Mm-hmm. And her songs were, were great. One of my favorite songs is now uh, Everything's a Dildo If You're Brave Enough, <laughs> sung on a ukulele. So take that, Mr. Hopper. Get the bed hoppers in on that and mm-hmm. uh, let them... Let them it could be a duet. Oh. Mr. H could be like, yes. everything's a dildo if you're brave enough. And then Mrs. H could be like, bonk. <laughs> I hope we're not using a chicken as a dildo. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it would be great. Yeah, there you go. Oh, my God. I demand 10% royalties <laughs> <laughs> on all future publications. Uh-huh. So, yeah. Good stuff. Seven weeks till vacation. Yes, I mean, cannot wait. Not that I'm counting, but I'm fucking counting. Look, yeah, and um, which means we're going to have to start backlogging some podcasts so that we can release podcasts while we're not recording podcasts. I know. It's well, we are going to be recording a podcast at Desire, Tuesday. a live one, but we will not be releasing it live. <laughs> <laughs> weird. Yeah, it is weird. But Yeah, it's uh, very much, I'm very much looking forward to that. Uh, to be there. Oh, and the bedhoppers will be there. Maybe we can do another crossover. We should definitely do another crossover oh. with the gentlemen. Oh, like, yeah. It's going to be, look, there. we're going to pull muscles. I was going to say, between you, Mr. H, and the gentlemen all in a room together, I, I, I don't think I'll have anything to say. I just want to sit there and laugh. That's yeah, all I want. Just giggle. Just yeah. giggle. That's what I want. I want you in one corner giggling and Mrs. H in another corner going, <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you don't know that joke, please listen to the bed hoppers. They're fucking hilarious. And um, Mrs. H imitates a chicken on occasion. She loves the word pussy. And I'm not banging. sure she does it on occasion. I think she's only done it like once when she had to. Well, good. good luck going through their 50 something episodes. <laughs> You'll find it. It'll be great. Uh, they're funny as hell. Yeah. So yeah, uh, Desire, November second through ninth. Mm-hmm. There, are, there's like a small handful of rooms remaining. Yeah, like, it's it is. It's like crunch time, people. Mm-hmm. If you're gonna go, you should go. And there's Book people it. out there who are waffling back and forth. People who, who we know and love, and they're trying to convince themselves that they should go. And I'm here to tell you, yes, just do it. Yes, you should. Yeah, you should go. But before that, we have the next Pendulum Party. On September 20th. Yep. So I'm really looking forward to that. Yes. Uh, so it's only about a week and a half away now. We're going to be a little late because we have tickets to a friend show. But only about an hour or so. Yes. But well, we will be yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, yes, we will be there. Very much looking With forward to With our bells tonight. on. Not know, for very bells. long. I mean, they're going to come off quickly. Yeah. But. <laughs> because, yeah, 1030 will be right around the corner. And then Angela's like, oh, my God, my clothes just fell off. <laughs> uh, so, yes, very much looking forward to that. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. And then after that, uh, the next big thing, I think, is Rabbit Hole. Yes. We're going back to Radelaide, people, for the second rainbow party at uh, the Rabbit Hole. October 19th. In Radelaide. Yeah, yep. that's October 19th. Yep. Mm-hmm. So a month after Pendulum. Yes, Woot. and only like, what, a week and a half, two weeks before Desire. Yes. Crazy. Because, you know, crazy. It's going to be busy. It's going to be great. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, I've got a couple of trips to Melbourne lined up. So oh, wow. uh, if you're in Melbourne, message us on one of our things because I like to get drinks. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> BTW. <laughs> Can be totally pants on. I'm totally okay with that. All right, what are we, um, what else are we rambling about tonight? We are going to ramble about some of our recent Play situations that uh, may were a little sexy, but they were also a little awkward at times. The less than optimal yeah. play situations. Yeah, because it's one of those things that, you know, we have a lot of sexy play situations and we love them very much. But there's also awkward times and we talk about them sometimes, but I think it's good to know that you're not the only one out there that has awkward, sexy times. It's true. It happens. 
On occasion, we have a swinger fail, 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 fail. <laughs> it's very true. Yeah,、yes. I mean, it happens. It happens.、Uh, you you can't you can't. It's not all. Look, some podcasts it's all sunshine, sunshines, lollipops. But remember, sometimes there's clouds, and all lollipops suck. Wow! Wait, no, that's wow. vacuum cleaners that suck.、Um, <laughs> you have to suck a lollipop. Now, how many licks does it take to get to the center of your tootsie pop? Look, anyway, it was something like that.、Mm-hmm. So, yes, let's talk about one recent one that is on our minds.、Yeah. I'm assuming your mind as well from our secret spot. Uh huh. Yeah, so it was a night that I forget even what the theme night was. It doesn't it was a really matter. Like any other. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't remember what the theme was, and it, it doesn't matter. But it, it was a night where we, I think we knew like one or two couples there, but we didn't know most people. There were a lot、right. of either newbies or new people to us. Yes. And there were a number of couples that were really interesting,、uh, either because they were very attractive. And or they were really interesting to talk to. It was just yeah, we had a lot of good conversations that night, and I know it was one of those times where I would have been happy to play with any one of probably four couples easily.、Mm-hmm. And so we were trying to figure out because people were a bit spread out between the two front lounge rooms. There were some folks sitting down at the bottom of the stairs in those couple of chairs in that table area. And the couples that we were interested in were kind of spread out between all of those, so it was a bit of a where do we want to go? How do we want to spend our time? And ultimately, we went with you know the typical, the usual quietest spot to have a conversation, and that、right. was those chairs down at the bottom of the stairs. And there were two couples sitting down、yeah. there talking already. And it was a rare night in which I really wanted to play with somebody.、Mm-hmm. Like, let's just play with somebody new. Let's play with somebody new, and,、yeah. which is rare for me. So yeah, we chatted with them for quite a while. Yeah. And they were nice people and very attractive people. Yeah, and I think we'd all gotten dressed down at some point during all of that. Yeah,、um, I don't remember exactly if that was during the chat, before, after. I'm not. I don't quite remember that part.、Um, but yeah, at some point, one of the couples went to go upstairs to play just them, and they made a comment to the other two of us down there, the other two couples of us down at the bottom, and they made a comment about going upstairs. Feel free to join us,、mm-hmm. basically. Was the long and short of it, and so we looked at each other. Well, and the second couple—I don't know if you remember—the second couple followed immediately. Yes. And then the fella of the second couple even looked it up and said, "Come on up." Yeah. And so we're like, "All right, cool. That's confirmation from both couples that they're interested in in us." Yeah. So yeah, we looked at each other and. Yeah, and we were like, "All right, let's let's go up and." Cool. Yeah, and we were. We were about maybe ten seconds behind the others. We were. It was just enough that they had already started playing. Yeah, it was a little longer than ten seconds because I think you had to get rid of your shoes, or you were. We were dropping off something、okay. at the locker. Yeah, we were just a bit behind them. And again, enough that they were already playing the four of them when we got up there. So we, rather than really kind of like barging in and interrupting with that, we just went to the other bed because there was nobody else in the room at the time, and so we went to the other bed and just started playing with each other,、mm-hmm. which is really nice. I like playing with you,、I、especially、know. with other people around. It's great. <laughs> so yeah, we started kind of playing with each other, and、uh, one of the people in the other foursome. She rolled over and and she engaged us. She asked if it was、mm-hmm. okay, and she engaged us to to play with them. So then we kind of joined in with that that group, and so then there were six of us kind of together playing. But ultimately, I feel like it was more kind of like four and then four, with that one couple being the center yeah, of it. Yeah. Even though the other couple had invited us up. I didn't really feel like they were really into us. Well, it, it was just weird because he invited us up, and、yeah. like、she was—I thought she was very attractive. I thought he was very attractive, and we got up there and and started playing with the you know the other lady.、Yes. She was you know playing with you, and it, very quickly something happened in the way the the bed divided, and I was suddenly sort of on the outskirts. No one, there was no one for me to play with, just the way with everybody、mm-hmm. was playing, which oh, cool, that's fine, but. You know, I, it, it's it is one of those things that you know. After a couple of minutes, you're kind of like, okay, I I want to play with somebody.、Yeah. Let's if we're in a situation like that, let's rotate a bit.、Mm-hmm. Like, come on, people, it's only fair.、Uh, <laughs> but you never want to push a single person out of the circle. You、yeah. should never want to push a single person out of the circle. So, the one of the ladies 
was now free. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of got up and walked around the bed and climbed back on the bed and, you know, asked her, hey, hey, you know, do you mind if I go down on you? Mm -hmm. And she's like, no, go ahead. And I did. And yeah. I did for quite a while. Um, and then finally she tapped out, which happens. And she was like, no, 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 I need, I need a break. I need to breathe. I was like, cool. And then so she was crawling over and she's like, roll over. And so I rolled over on my back. I wasn't erect because there was really no, I don't want to say there was no reason for me to be, but you know, it's like, it's, I don't I tend to get aroused from just watching play or, mm -hmm. you know, it has to be some, something a little more stimulating. It needs to be interactive. Than, than just visual. Yeah. yeah. And so, but she looked at me, I, I went to kiss her at one point and she goes, no. I was like, all right, cool. You don't kiss. And she's like, no. I'm like, all right, cool. That's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, but I will say like, if had I known that going into it, I think that that would have set me up for expecting, understanding the way the rest of the things mm -hmm. are going to go. Look, if kissing isn't your thing, that is fine. You making some weird life choices. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't want to, I'm not I'm going to judge you. I was going to say, I don't want to judge you and I don't want to judge you, but I'm going to judge you. Uh, if kissing is your line, but oral sex and penetrative sex mm -hmm. is totally cool. You have some very misplaced values on kissing. But or, we also, on sex. I was gonna say, but we also really enjoy kissing. Like there's just something really arousing about that. Well, you know, and it's also a good way. I feel like before Going any further, it's a good way to see if your play styles mesh a little bit. Can you adapt? Because, you know, you're, especially the first time you kiss them, when you're kind of learning their style, yeah, your it's style. Very and yeah, and so it can be, you know, are we gonna, is this gonna work? Or is, is there gonna be a give and take? Or is this, you know, an all or nothing kind of thing? Yeah. So, look, I, that, that was fine, but I think if I'd known that going into mm -hmm. it, it would have changed my mindset coming out of it. Uh, but, then she, I roll over on my back and she, honestly, she just looks at my junk, takes three fingers, kind of grabs me, pulls, pulls once, lets go, and then just goes away. And I was like, you're supposed to be instantly erect after that one little tug. Clearly. And I was like, honey, <laughs> you're not, I mean, like, you're not, no, no, <laughs> no. Uh, but it was just kind of like, it was a, it was so rip the bandaid off. Yeah. Uh, that like suddenly that was mentally, I was like, all right, that's it. I'm this, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is now no longer fun. And I know her partner was very similar with you. Yeah. So while you were going down on her, cause you're going down on her for quite a, I felt like quite a while. I don't I know. It was maybe six, seven minutes. It wasn't that long okay. because when she tapped out, I was like, uh, really? Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Because while you were. Clearly, she was not into me. Well, while you were going down on her, I was playing with the lady of the other couple and the guy of the other couple. I think he had been going down on me. And, and then at some point during all of that, I think they kind of ended up back together or maybe in, might have been that the other lady started engaging with one of them. But her partner did come around to the other side of the bed where I was. Mm -hmm. and The one that I was playing with. Yes, the yes. one you're playing with. Her partner came to the other side of the bed from where he had been. And came to where I was, and he just kind of stood there in front of me. And again, he's the one that first invited us up to the playroom. Yeah. But once we were in there, he didn't really say anything. There wasn't much communication with him. It was a little bit just kind of like, yeah, come on up. And then he's just there. And there's yeah. very little communication of any sort coming from him. But yeah, so he came to the side of the bed, and he just stood in front of me. And he was erect, but he just kind of stood there. And I was like... Oh, okay. So start going down on him. And honestly, after I think like two licks of the lollipop, he just kind of pulled back. And I think he kind of pushed me away a little bit. And then he went back around to the other side of the bed back to her. And it was like, I don't really know what you wanted because you didn't really say anything. You didn't give any direction. Yeah. You just stood there with a penis in my face. Yeah. And like, I can do something with that. But at the same time, a little more interaction is a lovely thing, I feel like. Yeah, it was... And so, yeah, they I just kind of... I, after that point, you came back around to me, and I don't know if the other four mixed up and got back together. I think they all pretty well paired off. Yeah, because you, you and I having sex with the one fella. Yeah, that was before the, okay. the guy, though. Okay. And so, yeah, then you came back around to me, and we ended up having sex. Yeah. And then just, like, finishing up and be like, all right, we're done with yeah, this. Yeah, we're out of here. And so, yeah. Smoke bomb. Yeah. And, Which and is it's, really a shame, because the one couple was really nice. I really liked the couple that I would say was in the middle of it all. But yeah. the other couple, it was, 
I, ultimately, I would say lack of communication and and maybe not making intentions clear as to what they expected, what they wanted. Yeah. And and I and maybe we take for granted the fact that people do fluid play kind of like what we're used to. But at the same time, they didn't really say anything from the beginning of this no. is what I want or this is what I'm looking for. Yeah. Maybe they didn't know, but still even just to say that. Well, they weren't new. That was the other thing. Yeah. Now they're a couple were newbies. So we, I think we took for granted that they would be a little more communicative yeah. and, and easy to to play with, to yeah. play along with. But that just proves that, you know, don't, don't make assumptions. Yeah. You know? And uh, part of that's on us, I guess. We should have been more upfront once we got up there. But again, they had already started playing. Right. And you don't want to stop play and go, okay, folks, let's discuss <laughs> the rules again. Uh, you know, so yeah. Yeah, it's weird. But I just thought it was. It was not pleasant. It was not enjoyable. No. It was sort of frustrating. And I, it was one of those things that I was kind of like, well, all right, cool. This sucks. Yeah. <laughs> like this. Yeah, I think both of us after that were just kind of like, all right, you know, now we're pretty well done for the night. Cause yeah. None, of, neither of us really walked away from that situation feeling great about it. Right. And so while there were still a lot of people at the club, because there were still, you know, it was late, but it wasn't that late. Yeah, it was probably. 30, yeah, o'clock. probably. So, it, and sometimes, you know, we would have gone downstairs, had some water and go back up for round two. But at that point it was like, no, nah, don't really feel it. Just right. kind of, that was just it for the night. Uh, and it, it was a shame because I did like the couple that was in the middle and our interactions with them were good. But yeah, when he just kind of came around to the side of the bed to me, didn't really say anything, just stood there with the penis. I'm like, meh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what do you want me to do? You want and me to smack it? <laughs> like, what should I do with this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, so, I mean, it just goes back to the thing that it's not always, it's yeah. not always great. Uh, so we all have good times and bad times. Yeah, um, and in, in leading up to that, like I said, we had great conversations, really enjoyed their company. Yeah. It was just, just played it and work. Yeah. Just didn't work. No chemistry. <laughs> wah, wah. Yeah. Wah, wah. All right, it's a bit early, but we're going to take a quick commercial break, and then when we get yeah. back, we'll talk to you about our secret spot in the country. <laughs> I'm Jace. I'm Emily. And I'm Dedeker. And with our powers combined, we, we are, are the, the Multi Amory Podcast. Podcast. If you're happy with the same old ways of dating, if you enjoy sucking at communication, and you have no desire to improve your romantic life, then our podcast might not be for you. But if you want some out of the box ideas to deepen your current relationships, broaden your sexual horizons, develop a better understanding of yourself, or learn more about non monogamy, then come check out the Multi Amory Podcast on the Swingset Network at swingset.fm, the Swingset FM Android app, or at at multiamory.com. And we're back. You sound a little bit country when you said country. Country. <laughs> country, might. <laughs> I can't do this. No, no. no. Don't even. Um, yeah. Yeah. So a couple weekends ago, mm-hmm. we did, uh, there was this big thing, our secret spot in the country. OSS was trying to go. Uh, to a little town in New South Wales, about four hours in from the coast, mm-hmm. uh, called Orange. And, and what do they grow there, Bradford? Not oranges. <laughs> <laughs> Come to find out. Actually, I think it's apples, but... Apples and oranges, whatever. <sighs> yeah. yeah. So they... Uh, it's named for like Colonel Orange or Sergeant Pepper. I don't know. So... <laughs> We went out to Orange. Unfortunately, poor Lawrence got a touch of the I'm dying man flu. And, uh, I'll give him credit. I don't think it was just man flu. No, it wasn't. I think it he was, was in the flu. hospital. Yeah. He was in the hospital. He, we, you know, it was touch and go for there for a second. Yeah. But uh, he basically said, okay, you know, I, we were going to go anyway, mm-hmm. the four of us. But uh, he was like, can, you know, you and you guys help Jess host now? Mm-hmm. And we we're like, yes, we can. Yes, we can. So we <laughs> piled into their car, and uh, little Jess had had a big night because she was at our secret spot the night before. Mm-hmm. It was one of her big parties, and uh, I don't think she slept that night. So she slept the entire way while yeah. you drove the entire way. Yeah. And, and, and uh, I will say, though, that at this point, we had the car loaded up with a bunch of towels from the club. Yes. Condoms, lube. I yeah. mean, all the stuff that you need for a good party. <laughs> Fucking hilarious. <laughs> like, it was all this OSS uh, accoutrement. Yeah. And, and a couple of gift baskets that had sheets. been donated by yeah. uh, RHP and sheets. And uh, we had 40 towels. Yeah. So 
hilarious. Which were nice little pillows for, for Jess. Yeah, yeah. I'm not really sure what she used for pillow, but that would be a great one. Yeah, she covered up with your jacket, which was okay. funny. It was adorable. So we drove the four hours. We got to this place. Uh, it was a beautiful house. Oh, yeah. Lovely it was lovely. House. Huge. Four bedroom, three bath, uh, maybe four bath, uh, but a huge house. Yeah. And we... Yeah, we decked it out, got everything set up, and then we went to the grocery store to buy <laughs> food, uh, you know, some light nibbles and some drinks. We ended up with, I don't know, $400 worth of Cokes and, and drinks and chips and snacks and lube and shampoo or body wash. And mm-hmm. I mean, it was... Just all the stuff. Yeah, yeah. All the stuff you need to host yeah. 40 people or 60 people in a swingers party. Yeah. So... We get back to the house and unload the car, a few trips, and pack everything up. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like putting bowls of condoms in every room, putting the special lighting in each room. Uh, sheets and towels. Sheets and towels yeah. and lube. Oh my. It was, it was <laughs> kind of crazy. But we... Uh, it turned out really well, though. I really like how the lighting was. Yes. Uh, that was really good. It was a nice touch. And there was, you know, we had music playing. It, yeah, it was actually really, I think it turned out very lovely. I think so, too. Yeah. It, yeah. All in all. As far it, as the venue goes, yeah. Yeah. All in all, the venue was fucking brilliant. Mm. So, yeah, we... Uh, and, and it was laid out well. Sorry to interrupt. No, you're fine. Um, yeah, go ahead. But I think the, it was laid out well because you had kind of the the kitchen, dining room area, and then there was kind of in the middle of the place, and then there was a lounge area on one side. Yes. So that was definitely a more social area. And we'll come into a bit later why the lounge room being on the one side was a really good thing, because then all of the bedrooms and playrooms were on the other side. So it was nice, to, again, like the club, you have that separation of social areas and play areas. So that, I think, was really great in how it was set yeah, up. Yeah, because there was a bunch of people. Yeah. Uh, so time comes for the party, and what I think there was 25 couples and maybe... Five or six. I think so. Women. I think it ended up being fifty something people. Yeah. So yeah, just over fifty something people. I think it was right at sixty. I think with us and okay. Jess. So whatever, yeah. right around there. So the place was fucking packed. Yeah. And it, and there was a couple from the area as well that were helping to host. Yes, thank they God. they had helped to do a lot of the organization and promotion and things like that. Yeah, they did so. a lot of the legwork. Mm-hmm. It was great. So yeah, we got everybody. You know, everybody had come in. And trying to introduce ourselves to everybody, there was people from as far as, again, four hours away. Yeah. And there was people as far as four minutes away. Mm -hmm. So you had a huge range of people and people from different locations coming to this party. So it was one of those going into it. I think you and I both had host hats on. It was very much for me like a pendulum party. It was all business, no pleasure. Jess, poor Jess. What the first part of the night was like right on it, and then she just lost her fire and <laughs> and was just. I think at one point she passed out on a couch because mm-hmm. uh, again she had been up for like at that point forty hours. So except for a car nap, doesn't count. Yeah, car naps aren't the best. So yeah, we uh, got everybody in, and we again we had some gifts to give mm-hmm. out. So we did the a big drawing. I got up, I got to stand on a cooler and an esky, and, an esky. And you did a very nice speech. Thanks. Yeah. I did the rules, regulations, uh-huh. like lots of things. Treat this place like your own home, which we'll get to that. <sighs> and apparently most of these people live in a fucking barn or in a yurt down by the river. <laughs> so I love you country folk, but goddamn, it's called a garbage bin. We'll discuss. But so, yeah, we, you know, I did my little, my little spiel. Yeah. Got a few laughs, but then tried to make some very serious points and then told everybody to fucking let loose, have fun, yeah. but don't go outside and be too loud because remember we have neighbors. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, all in all, the night went pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty good. And it was it was interesting because there were some people who had been to our secret spot in Sydney before that were there. There were also a lot of people who've never been to a swingers club yes. or anything like that. So a lot so of never been to a swingers party. A party, yes. yeah. So they were very new to all of it. And so but at the same time I think that everyone was doing a good job of walking around, mingling, talking to people. I didn't really see too many people that weren't engaged in conversation with someone. But I do think because there were 
enough new people that the whole dress down, how do you get play started, some of that, just people weren't really sure exactly how to do it or they weren't comfortable starting it. And so one of the the other lady hosts that lives around there, she and I went into one of the bedrooms and we're like, all right, let's dress down. Like if we dress down and, you know, just kind of show a bit more skin and show that you can be comfortable in that, then maybe that'll kind of get things going. So we did. Well, it's kind of funny. So that the, I think the impetus to that was somebody came up to me and was like, um, somebody's going to have to get the party started. I was like, all right, cool. And he goes, well, you know, you know, can you guys dress down? And I was like, well, yeah, Angela normally dresses down around 1030. And he goes, a lot of us have babysitters. And like, it, cause I think it was 9.30ish at that right. point. Right. And yeah. I was like, oh yeah, you probably 10.30. Yeah. You probably want to get the party started. Yeah. And didn't even think about that. That you might want to get it going earlier. Yeah. Because you yeah. have a sitter, you know, watching kids at home. Yeah. So it was like, right. We'll, we'll fix that. So that's yeah. when you and the other lady went and, and dressed down. Yeah. And then I. Took and her my outfit shirt. was amazing. Oh, she looked amazing. Oh like, yeah. Fucking brilliant. And, and I took my shirt off as well and had a harness mm-hmm. on. And so, yeah, we, uh, we came back out and everybody was like, woo! But then that but was But that did like, get things yeah. rolling, yeah. As soon as that happened, people yeah. started uh, losing clothes. Yeah. Uh, surprisingly. So. And that happened surprisingly quick. Yeah. Which I, I expected Within it to be. Within 30 minutes. Yeah, I expected it to be, you know, some people kind of losing clothes here and there. But again, I think people were just ready for it. They just, nobody wanted to be the first. Right. And yeah, so like you said, within 30 minutes, I think basically everybody was dressed down. Yeah. yeah. It was, which was funny. So yeah, and people started playing and yeah. there it was, yeah, it was, it was good for a while. Yeah. A lot of good sexy sounds and it was nice just to, we ended up talking to so many really interesting people and and it was funny because I would be so lost in conversation that I'd be like oh I need to go wander around and a make sure people are having fun and you know make sure that that everything's good and and just like just partake in some of the sexiness and just look at it and do the voyeur thing and <laughs> listen to all the sounds and I just I love that which is funny because I actually never even did that I never even walked through to see that's funny like I it, it was just, it was one of those things that I was just so focused on uh-huh. the front end that I never really went to the back. Well, I thought it out. was more interesting that the one room that I thought was going to get the most action really didn't. Right. And yeah. so I thought it was interesting just to see the spaces that people did choose and, right. and potentially why that might be. There were two bedrooms that had uh, queen size beds mm-hmm. and then two bedrooms that had two twin size beds in it. And the two twin size bedrooms got the most action. Yeah. 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 I think they were doing races. <laughs> like thrusting races. Uh-huh. Like, that's what I'm That thinking. makes sense. God, it's windy outside. Oh, crazy windy outside. You people too. probably can't hear that, but yeah, it's really windy outside. So the night was going well. Yeah. Going quite well. Yes. And, and people are at home going, but Bradford, why do you keep saying it like that? <laughs> uh, we had an incident. We had an intermission. An intermission is what I call that. That's yes. right. An interval. Uh, so we had somebody come up to us and say, there's a lady who's sick in the bathroom. Right. Like, and admittedly, some of these folks, they were drinking. And yes. they were drinking like it was their job. Yeah. And so we, I, you know, we just thought that she had drunk too much alcohol yeah. and was just getting sick. So I went back there to check on her and see what was going on. And there was a guy with her who I didn't really... I didn't know, I hadn't seen her come in. Right. So I assumed he was her partner. And he made a comment or two as, as she was, you know, throwing up and whatnot. He made a comment or two that made me realize that's not her partner. And so I asked, I said, who did she come with? And he was like, oh, I'll go get her. And so went and got some other lady. The lady comes in and I couldn't get much out of the, the lady who was sick. And cause she was pretty well basically almost passed out at that point. And so the other lady came in and I I asked what she had been drinking or was it just alcohol? And she said, no, she also had methadone. And it was like, oh, this isn't just alcohol then. And yeah, this is suddenly, yeah. you know, like it was a problem before, but now this is a problem problem. Yeah. And so at that point, fortunately right then, because I was like, we can't deal with this. This is more than what we can deal with and especially in the middle of a party when you want everybody else to have a good time yeah. we're not good there's we're, there's nowhere to isolate her whatever and so it was like we're not dealing with this and so fortunately at that moment somebody came in and said hey there's a nurse in the other room do you want them yes 
Yes, we do. Yeah. And so nurse comes in and, and a take, couple of nurses. Yeah, a couple of nurses come came in and basically just took over. And bef- as soon as they walked in and realized what happened, they called the paramedics. Yeah. And so they they just took over. And at that point, there were so many people in this little bathroom that you and I and one of the other hosts kind of backed away and were just like. She's being taken care of. Yeah. It's fine. Let's, we're, we're extraneous. Let's yeah. go take care of the rest of the group. Yeah. Let's make sure that everybody else is, is okay and get things ready for the paramedics to come in. Yeah. Because admittedly, you've got then this house full of swingers. Some of them having sex. Some of them having sex. Some mostly naked and whatnot. Yeah. And it's like, you know, what are we, you know, paramedics are going to be coming in. So we just immediately start going down the hall, <laughs> close all the bedroom doors and say, hey, paramedics are coming. Someone's sick. Just stay where you are until we tell you otherwise. And then everybody that was in the common area, we managed to get into the lounge room, which fortunately had a door on it. Yes. But it was just, hey, someone's sick. Paramedics are coming. Go into the lounge room, please. We'll let you know what's going on and when to come back out. And so basically, you know, the paramedics end up getting in there. And there's like all this food. I mean, it's clear there's a party going on. But they don't really see people. <laughs> right, yeah. It's clear because there's food everywhere. And you can hear people talking. There's drink. You can hear yeah. people talking and laughing. You know, <laughs> and, you know, because of the, the, the drug situation, the cops were called as well. Yes, because so they, they were, want to make sure that it's a safe environment for the paramedics. Right. And yeah. so, you know, the police are there. And, you know, you know I, I, people who are listening know how some swingers are so secretive that... Yes. That, you know, the idea that the cops were even there was not, people were not comfortable or happy no. about that. No. So we're trying to talk to people and be like, look, as long as you stay in this fucking room, nobody's going to know you're here. Nobody knows. Yeah. There's no reason. Yeah. Like, we're not doing anything wrong. No. So it, uh, yeah, and the cops were great. They were. They really were great. They, they were, you know, typical country folk police, well, which were lovely, means they're lovely human beings. They're pretty relaxed. They're happy to chat with you. They, I think they were just happy that we weren't they, angry, loud, obnoxious people. Yeah, they just wanted to make sure that, that she a, was safe. That she was safe. That the paramedics that were going to be coming in were going to be safe, and that there wasn't a bigger problem that needed to be taken right. care of. And there wasn't. No. So it was a you know it was an easy environment. Hopefully, I feel like anyway for them to come into, because it was very much as soon as they got here, we were like, she's down there, point yes. directly to where right she this is. Way. Yeah. And, and, you know, there were still people with her. The nurses were with her and, and that kind of thing. And so it was, yeah, I feel like it was pretty easy. But it did take some time for them to do their thing, for the paramedics to come, evaluate, you know, get her on the, the gurney, take her out. Um, so it, it took some time to get all of that hap- yes. get all of that done. And I think people were getting antsy at that point. I think so. Cause it, I think the whole thing took about 30 to 45 minutes. I would minutes. have said, yeah. And so, yeah, people were getting antsy. and yeah. and understandably. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, but because people are like, I want more drink. I yes. need to go to the bathroom. Yeah. And people would come out again, half dressed, and you're like, please go work in there. <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah it, they but they they took her out, and like spoiler alert, but in a good way, she was fine. Yes, yes. I think she was just a little embarrassed. Yes, uh, had made a bad decision, and yeah. So yeah, look. It, it's something that happens, and it's going to be a topic that we talk about in a future podcast. It's something we've wanted to talk about for a while. Which is alcohol and yeah. drug use and the swinger community and mm-hmm. what that looks like and what it means. But for for this case, it was just she had made a bad decision, yeah. and unfortunately, it, it got to the point where we weren't comfortable to handling it ourselves because no. we couldn't. Yeah. And so... You know, and it's not we, the space had, for it. Right. And we yeah. had to call, you know, I say we, the, the nurses called the paramedics, which yeah. we would have happily done. Yeah. Um, yeah. It just all happened so fast. That it was like, bam, bam, yeah. bam. Okay. Paramedics are coming. Yeah. Sweet. Done. Yeah, cool. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Now, now we just need to. Now it's just make sure people are out of control. the way. Yeah. yeah. Just make sure people are out of the way. So they have a clear path. So, yeah. so she leaves and her friend leaves as well. And, you know, we go back in and we're like, okay, everybody, this, here's the update. This is what happened. Yeah. This is why it happened. Now go and frolic. Mm-hmm. And it, there was a few people who were like, well, I'm just going to go home and uh, this is bla- ba- bad. And, you know, it's like they were clearly upset mm-hmm. by the situation, very mm-hmm. s- clearly stressed out by it, as you might imagine. But ultimately, nobody left. Nobody yeah. went home. The The one lady who had said that she was definitely going to go home uh, ended up playing within, I think, I guess her partner was like, look, you know, it was no harm, no foul. Right. Nothing bad happened. Like, yeah. Let's not ruin the night yeah. because of a perceived wrong. Right. So they ended up standing around playing. There was a lady who did this 
couple of beautiful, sexy dances. Yeah, somebody got a lap dance. I'm going to say yeah. competition, but it just got a lot of people doing lap dances in the lounge room. And I, I wasn't actually yeah. in there for any of that because I was cleaning up messes and whatnot. I know but. that there were like at least three or four ladies who did lap dances for people and were just putting on a show and dancing. And it was great. And, and it, play did start back up. You know, people did get back into it. It probably took, I would say, 15, 20 minutes for people just to kind of, yeah. again, get back in that mindset. Um, but it... it People got there and it worked and, and people, it ended up, are resilient. yeah, and ended up having, it seemed like a great night, at least from what I saw. There were lots of sexy times and more sexy sounds. So <laughs> yeah, we definitely heard a lot of sexy times. Yeah. So yeah, the party started to wind down at about one thirty. Yeah. One forty five. people started leaving and we still, we had wonderful conversations. Yeah. Admittedly, I was drinking most of the night. Um, just because I knew I wasn't going to play and mm. I knew what I was drinking was, uh, was going to be, it wasn't going to really affect my ability to make life decisions. Yeah. But, um, as the night wore on, I think I sort of did the, uh, the logarithmic curve of drinking. <laughs> so the last hour I had probably three drinks, oh, wow. two drinks, at least two beers, I think three beers in mm. that last hour. So I was getting in that, like <laughs> we were, there was one couple I was having some really deep and meaningful conversations uh-huh. with. I heard a lot of musical theater. Uh, we discussed a lot of. I mean, that's what. I'm, that's, that's all that's deep and meaningful. Okay, uh, gotta sing. So, yeah, it was good. And then come about two forty-five, I started going through, and there was two couples left. And I was like, "All right, guys, look, we're going to shut down the party in yeah. in fifteen minutes." And they left without any fuss. Yeah. So three o'clock was came. Everybody had left except for the other couple who was helping us host. Yes. They finally were like, all right, we're going to bail too. So they left. We chatted with them for a good yeah. 30 minutes afterwards, sort of decompressing the night mm-hmm. and like, okay, let's, let's talk about what happened. Yeah. Uh, and again, it, it's funny. And like, this will be a topic that we touch on in future episodes, but growing up in the Reagan era in the U S mm-hmm. drugs are such a, oh my God, you, nobody should ever do them. Blah, mm-hmm. blah, 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 blah. It just sometimes it takes me a while to yeah. to reset uh, from that, and we had a, a great little decompression with them, yeah. and then they left, and then we basically woke up half woke up half carried little Jess to her bed, plopped her on the bed, and uh, yeah, we went back to mm-hmm. the bed, changed the fucking sheets. Yep. And uh, I was gonna say in the meantime, while we were kind of discussing things with the other couple, I was going around and at least collecting garbage and stuff yeah. um, because there were cups and things in different rooms. That's fine. 50 some odd people can make a, yeah. a whole hell of a lot of and, and it wasn't too bad, but it was just getting all the cups and things. But the one thing that I know to expect, but it is still always surprising to me, how many condoms and condom wrappers are just strewn about just everywhere. I mean, yes. just anywhere and everywhere you can imagine, there's a condom or a condom wrapper. Even in the... No, so, I was going to say, let's do our favorite place to find a condom. Okay. All right, so, you can go first. What was your favorite place that uh, you found a condom? My favorite place was the bowl of unused condoms, how to use condoms. So, does that mean we're now recycling? Recycling is a good thing, Angela. <laughs> recycling is a good thing. I mean, imagine that. Imagine reaching your hand in there for a new condom and uh-huh. grabbing somebody's old splooge-filled condom. <laughs> Yuck. No, it's uh, disgusting. That's... What the hell, people? Yeah. Uh, so mine was in a vase that was <laughs> beside one of the beds. Right. Uh, stuffed down into the vase with some Oh, tissue. not just like on top, but no, stuffed down, stuffed down, in. down oh in Oh, there, my God. Uh, as if we expected it to grow something. <laughs> you know, the, the seed of my uh-huh. lover will become the flowers of uh-huh. tomorrow's day. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was my favorite And it's place. funny because, you know... <laughs> You said earlier, like country people, but city people do it too. It happens at the club. True. It true. happens at house parties everywhere. But I did say to treat this house yes. like it's your own. Yes. So we never say, you would never say that at the club because it's a club and you know how people are with public places. But really? Yeah. <laughs> really? And admittedly, maybe we didn't have enough garbage cans. Next time we will bring more garbage cans. We'll have five more, bins in every room. More waste. Five it sounds like a political promise. I <laughs> promised five <laughs> bins in every room. Uh, you know, if that's how you treat your own house, because mm-hmm. I think there was one that was stuck to the wall. Oh, my God. Where people just kind of pitched it. Yeah. Like, it's, no. 
bad. Yeah. So yeah, there, there. So at least before we went to bed, I got all the condoms and condom wrappers cleaned up, and the cups and things, all the garbage thrown away as much as we could. Yes. And. But that was, you know, again, that's just kind of like puttering around easy stuff. While yeah. we're chatting, I can be doing that. So we left all the heavy lifting for the next day. <laughs> yeah, which was by heavy lifting, you mean the three or four loads of laundry that we did. And then the, uh, the I don't know, 12 trips down to the to the waste bins yeah. outside. All the recycling. Yeah. Well, so much recycling. So much recycling. Which was also interesting. And I suppose it makes sense also because of... Again, house party versus club, because we've seen this at other house parties, but we, you know, when people bring their own alcohol to a house party, it's some wine, a lot of beers and ciders, yeah. and a few people will bring um, liquor for mixing, yeah. but there's not as much liquor for mixing. Whereas at the club, you end up with more liquor and wine and less beer and ciders, yes. I feel like. I agree. I agree. So totally. it's interesting, the mix. And I don't think it's necessarily... I don't think it was a country city thing. I don't think so. I think, I think it's, it's house party I think it's versus, house party yeah. versus club. Yeah. 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 And I wonder why. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't quite understand. Maybe just because if you're going to another, like to a club, you're carrying more bottles, but then you're carrying to a house party too. So I don't know. Yeah. yeah. But I did think that was interesting that there were just so many beers inside. So then, of course, heaps of cans and bottles. And... It was it was a lot of weight, <laughs> uh, yeah. a lot of weight to bear. But yeah, yeah, we went through, cleaned the house up. It, I think the three of us, it took maybe two and a half hours. Maybe not even maybe that. two hours. Yeah. I mean, we had it back spick and span in yeah. no time, locked up in the long drive back home. Yeah, uh, we were back heading back to Sydney by before eleven a.m. Yep. So yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, and that was including us going out for breakfast. Yeah. So, then came home and took a nap. Uh, yeah, it took a <laughs> well deserved nap, and then went back into the city for something that yeah. night. Yeah. But I don't remember exactly what we went back into the city for. I, I think it was for a show. Don't recall either. I'm pretty sure we went in for another, maybe a friend show. I have no idea. So yeah, we um, man, that's gonna bother me now. Anyway, so yeah, we uh, we made it back to Sydney and. Yeah. Crashed a little. Yeah. And all in all, I think it was a really good night. I, I think, you know, we had a lot of fun talking to people, even yes. though we didn't end up playing with anyone. But, and I, I do think there was a lot of good interactions with people, at least from what I saw. It looked like there was a lot of play, a lot of people, you know, having good conversations and good just connections with others. And so despite the interval that we had, I think it all turned out really well. Yeah. So. I think so. Again, nobody, there was no harm, no foul. Yeah. No one was really hurt. And, and it's, it's funny, I guess I, it did kind of affect me in a negative way, mm -hmm. but it wasn't something that, you know. No, you can't was, help it. There was nothing that we could have done to prevent mm -hmm. that, to be honest. No. So, yeah, it was a pretty good weekend. Yeah. It was exhausting. <laughs> it, it was exhausting. I, it was exhausting, but in a good way. Mm, yeah. I needed a lot more sleep than I got. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And it is it is funny. There's, you know... Don't call it a swing or fail, I guess, but like we had so little sex that weekend. It's true. It's like it's true. we were managing everybody else's sex and not having any of our own, which is kind yeah. of funny. But well, even before we left to go that morning, so on the Saturday morning, typically we'll wake up and we'll have sex, and yeah. and I had sort of accounted for that until we found out that Lawrence wasn't going, and then it's like, oh, we have to do more stuff before we leave. Yeah, so we don't up, have time. Yeah, so yeah. it was up, out of bed, get going, and because it really was one of those things yeah. that Lawrence texted us at mm -hmm. 6 a.m. Yeah. And you, you, you know it's bad when you get a text from somebody at 6 a.m. that says, call me the moment you get this. <laughs> like, oh, God. <laughs> Are yeah. you in jail, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But in the end, it, it worked out. Uh, yeah. I, I think it was successful. I, th I know Lawrence is still sort of diving through mm -hmm. uh, all the details from it. But I foresee them doing it again. I think it was really good to... Get people, give people from the more rural areas uh, a party to go to, a place to go, and, and some place where they can do something like that. Because you did have people still driving in from further away, even than where that was. So yeah. for them to come to Sydney would be a massive thing. Right. Yes. And so you know, some people that we saw there had been to our secret spot. We'd seen them at the club. So for some people, they'll, they'll come in. And then for others, they don't maybe don't have the opportunity to, to be able to do that very often. So to have a party that can kind of come to their area is a really good thing. Because just 
you know, just because you're in a rural area, it doesn't mean there aren't swingers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 4% of the population people. I know. So it's, uh, it was good. Yeah. And, uh, I, you know, I had fun. Like we said, we talked to a yeah. lot of fun people, nice people. So yeah. yeah. Cool. Just not enough sex for us that weekend. Not nearly enough sex <laughs> for us that weekend. So yeah, you, but you could always, we always need more sex. Yeah. So. And we yeah. make up for it. Yes, we did. So, uh, any other little fails along the way that you can think of that um, we've had? I think those are pretty good for the more recent ones. Yeah. Yeah. I have to dig back a bit more for any other ones, but those were two that I think were just kind of like, especially the first one, I think just really put a damper on the evening for me. And I think for me, that's unusual Yeah. because even if something doesn't go according to plan or something's not perfect, I can usually bounce back pretty well. So I don't know if it was just my headspace that night or what, but that was one of those. I was like, Oh, look, I'm just, I'm done now. Let's go home. Yeah. And that I agree. So. And that, that one really did kind of affect me as yeah. well in a way. It's like, I think because it was such a rare night for me wanting to really wanting to go like, let's go on a hunt and let's yeah. find people that we want to play with and let's play and let's have fun. And to have that sort of, you think you've got it and then the rug gets pulled out mm-hmm. from under you and it's sort of like, well, that kind of sucks. Yeah. So, yeah. But mm-hmm. we'll, um, we'll you know, keep at it. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully not have too many more fails. No. Hopefully not. So, <laughs> more wins than fails anyway. <laughs> as long as the, the scales are tipped in that direction, it's okay. <laughs> Look, it all averages out, right? Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Let's, uh, let's wrap this up a bit then. So... Tell us your swinger fails. Yeah. <laughs> like we, we don't want to be alone. So, and yeah. we're happy if, if you want us to, we're happy to read them aloud. Absolutely. And share them with everyone so we can all commiserate together. Again, that's the thing. <laughs> Misery loves company. So like we, like we said, it's not always, not everything always works out perfectly. Yeah. But you look at the example of Our Secret Spot in the Country, that actually worked out. For most mm-hmm. people, they had a good time. And everybody that we spoke to was had a really good time. Yeah. So, you know, just because... Just because one bad thing happens doesn't mean that, that it's... The evening is... Yeah, it doesn't mean that. And yeah. and another thing to, to remember is, you know, that was our experience. Our experience wasn't bad. It was yeah. just sort of like, oof, woof, yeah. you know, <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> So, yeah. but yeah, tell us, uh, tell us what you've got going on and, uh, we'd love to, we'd love to share those stories. So you can message us at by the by podcast on Instagram, on Facebooks and on Twitter. Once again, we are at by the by podcast. You can send us an email, the atoms of love at gmail.com. Yeah. And, uh, support us on Patreon. We, uh, we we are now past our first goal, and we're very happy. Thank you for everybody who's been supporting us so far. Uh, sent out the pendulum party emails. I think it was last week, maybe. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, we've got so some, excited for that. some more cum rags and stuff coming out. We've got more gifts and things that are coming soon that will be delivered. And the moment they're delivered, they're gonna we're gonna send them out to some of our long term listeners yeah. uh, because. Or I'm sorry, our long-term Patreon supporters, I should say, because you know they're yeah. cool and we want to share them. <laughs> so yeah, uh, thank you guys. That's www.patreon.com/slash/by-the-by-podcast. So yeah, we very much appreciate it. If you want to get some geeky sex toys, go to geekysextoys.com mm-hmm. and and get your stuff there for a checkout code. Use by the by, and yeah. that is a five percent discount. Yes, five percent. We're going to take uh, some nice geeky sex toys to Desire with us. We should. On, I'm so glad you said that. I, we need to get online and order I know. some stuff. <laughs> completely forgot. It's going to be here so soon. Completely forgot. Can't wait. Like seven weeks, baby. Yep. So, yeah, I need to uh, get on there. We'll pick out some stuff and mm-hmm. we'll throw it in the, yeah. Awesome. Yay, good times. Good, pri- good prizes. We give, those, we give that stuff away because we don't want to have to fly back with it. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, why very not? true. <laughs> Last year we gave away a, a a light sword, which looks like a light saber, light saber dildo, uh, yeah, as, and it glows and it's a glowing dildo. So mm-hmm. this year, I don't know. I'm we'll have to peruse and see what we feel like. Yeah, yeah. I'm feeling you know Pokemon Go is still big, so some of the Poke Toys mm-hmm. maybe I don't know, maybe a maybe a Doctor Who something or another. No, I don't know. So yeah, go check it out. Buy you some stuff. Use by the by as your discount. And uh, you get some stuff off. So, all right. Yeah, Did I miss anything? No, you're good. No, I know I'm good. <laughs> Say good night, Angela. Good night, Angela. 
Hi, this is Dedeker, co-host of the Multiamory podcast. We offer new ideas and advice for multiple forms of love. Everything from conscious monogamy to ethical polyamory and radical relationship anarchy. And you're listening to a Swingset Network podcast. Find us and much more at swingset.fm.